Kaczynski's book. I'll read you how many, I'll give you the number of suggestions which came through like comments and then just pick a, pick, pick a number and I'll tell you what, uh, what that corresponds to. And then we just do like 10 minutes and you can, you know, feel free to, if you want to move location or do whatever, I'm cool with that. A lot of these have been like real time mono scenes, but okay. uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm down with doing whatever. I don't care. Okay. Sounds great. Um, let's see. Uh, do you, let me test and to see if what happens if I take my headphones off, if uh, you get any feedback or anything like that, because uh, that'll free me up from having clunky microphone and face kind of thing. Clunky, clunky microphone face guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's that's my character. <laughs> no, I mean, it's 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 not there's a little echo, but it's nothing horrible. It sounds fine. OK, if this sounds fine, then we'll just do this. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right, I'll bring us on. Boom, boom. We now are live, my friend. Uh, and we have uh, 23 suggestions. So pick a number one to 23. Wow. Uh, let's go in the middle. I feel like the middle always gets neglected in these kind of things. Let's go like 11. Let's do it. 10. All right. This comes from uh bob mirit and our suggestion is uh surfing surfing yeah all right cool cool thanks bob yeah we'll see what happens daydreaming hmm? i said you're daydreaming it looks like you're yeah. daydreaming sorry sorry i'm i'm sorry i'm here i'm here i'm here uh, no, no, no. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm right there with you, you know, right after lunch. And it's like, uh, yeah, who calls these meetings anyway? <laughs> right. I'd rather be outside. I'll be honest. Oh. I'd rather be at the water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're shopping. Here we are. Suit and tie business meeting after lunch on a Friday is the best. Day. We're gonna, gonna, gotta wrap up the week. And Todd's not even here. He's, he's never, he's never on time to these. No. And I want to be like late. But I know the day I'm late, he's going to show up on time. Yeah. And then it's going to be held against me for the rest of my career. So, oh, yeah. Man. What happened, man? Like, we, we came into this business to surf, and here we are, freaking man, the spreadsheets. What's going on? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what's going on is we're so against the, 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 the spectrum of surfing. We're at the other end of what we wanted to do. <laughs> we are at the one end, you know, and I think, I mean, for me, it's like the security kind of, it, it took everything out of me. And next thing you know, 15 years pass and here we are. And it's like, okay. we're doing the things we promised we'd never do, but it's in exchange for the things we want. It's so depressing, man. I did, it has been 15 years, geez. Yeah. You know, well, you say, oh, I'm just doing this for now and you get used to the paycheck and then yeah, here you are. I mean, Doug, now turned into 15 years. We're still in the now. It's just extended. I guess. I guess. I mean, the, look, the, we could see. This is worse because we could see the water from here. <laughs> That's the worst part is we see it. We, we should be on the beach. And instead, we're in here. Look, we really should just get into the spreadsheets, though. I mean, like, we, we got it. We got we to gotta manage these accounts and uh, get the new classes rolling. So, nah, I'm done. Whoa. I'm done. What do you mean you're done? No, I'm taking, I'm gonna, dude, I'm taking my tie off. I'm done. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you're serious. You just, yeah. No, no, I got no time to waste. I had a brother. Uh, you didn't know this. I had a brother. And he, his whole life, he wanted to be in a band, but instead he chose security. And then he, you know, sad story, uh, passed away. Uh, freak scooter accident. First off, uh, shouldn't be riding a scooter. They're like donors, right? It's just a, an organ donor. But uh, anyway, he, he, I think his whole life regretted it. And right now, why not? Why not just leave right now? I'm not going to regret my life. I'm not going to look back and go, huh, I spent my life inside. We're not meant to be inside. We're meant to be outside. You just told me you had a brother and that he died. Yeah, that's a lot of info, right? I, 
I've known you forever. How, how has this never come up? Are you kidding me? No, uh, when I was, okay, so when I was six years old, uh, my brother, he was six, he, my brother was six years old and I, he, he was 12. Uh, a friend said, let's get on a scooter. He got on a scooter. Uh, he, he rode the scooter and he didn't know what he was doing. He, and he ended up, uh, yeah, it was, um, you know, he parked the scooter. So it wasn't even on the scooter when it happened. Okay. Uh, and then he stepped off the scooter uh, and he lost balance and uh, he fell, he hit his head. It was this whole thing. And, and, and I, I guess I just tried not to remember it, but. Your brother won. died from a scooter accident where yeah. the scooter was parked. Yeah. He lost his balance and he fell and he died. Yeah, he got off, he was on a scooter then when he got off the scooter. So we say it's a scooter accident because he was, he was next to the scooter. It's like a scooter adjacent accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, that, I guess that makes more sense, right? It was a scooter adjacent accident. But like, you know, did you, did you end up suing the scooter company? Like, is that why you call it a scooter accident? You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but they made so much, I mean, they sued Honda. It was a Honda Spree. Wow. Yeah. Your 12 year old brother was driving a Honda Spree around and then yeah. died not while it was in motion, but after it parked. Yeah. I this mean, is isn't it crazy? I can't believe there's so much about you. I, I, I don't know, man. That's crazy. Yeah. And he wa I know like what he wanted to do is he wanted to be in a band. And even though he was only 12, he wanted to be in a band and he was trying to do it. But you know, well, 12-year-olds also want to be like dolphin trainers. It doesn't mean you grow up to be a dolphin trainer. How cool would that be, though? really insensitive about your dead brother. But I'm also assuming this is like 20 years ago, so you're, we can talk frankly about this, right? right? Yeah, and to be fair, I, I didn't make it like a big deal, so I don't think you're being insensitive at all. Okay. If, if I had said to you, like, hey, I got to tell you something, Doug, there's something I want to share. You kind of just dropped this to me on a Friday yeah. afternoon in the middle of our freaking sales meeting. In the middle of my former sales meeting, I'm I'm done. Put I'm your done. tie back on, man. I, Come on, know, it's gone. It's gone. I have to, listen. Watch this. The fact that you're humming and taking your clothes off makes this weird now. Okay. All right. Okay. It's weirder. It's weirder when you're silent. I can't. I, there's <laughs> you called it you called it so i didn't want to make it I want, anyway uh i'm going to the water right now you know you're just leaving me with all the work oh man I hate to pull that card man if you walk out of here and i'm the only one still suited up and todd walks in i'm the one who's got to do this whole pitch got to manage all the things got to explain to them why sales are down as if the pandemic wasn't a good enough reason he doesn't ever think it is. And it's like, dude, it's a fucking global, it's a global pandemic. Of course sales are you know, down. Todd, you know, Todd, he doesn't care. What he cares about is like the bottom line. For a bro right. who like projects that surfer kind of like attitude and, and an image, man, he's ruthless. He strolls in as if he's got that, hey, everybody, let's chill. Right. And when he gets in, it's just like, bam. And the, the thing is, I'd rather have somebody yell at me Right. And somebody like Tom, who's like, hey, all right, so Harthy, he smiles at you. And it's like, oh, oh that smile is deadly. You don't want him smiling at you. We want him right. not looking at you. All right, all right, all right, all right. It's hard because there's only three of us. So he's always looking at one of the two of us. So, all right, all right, all right. I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry to ruin your, your dreams of having an afternoon to serve. You know what? If he doesn't in the next like three minutes, We'll call the meeting early. We'll go back to and finish the work, and then we'll we'll try to get out of here. Like, we'll get out of here half an hour early. It's like an early early release Friday. Remember, like in school, when you had those like early release days, and you just were so grateful for thirty minutes of your own life that you're trying to live back. And that we're at that point now, and not only we're at that point, he promised to be casual Friday, half day Fridays. Yeah. I mean, he promised a lot of things, but. No, nah, I'm, I'm uh, I, like, part of me is like, I'm ripping the shirt off and going, but part of me is like, I don't want to stick you with the work. That's cool, man. Wait, that's cool, man. I can go or that's cool, man. Like, thanks for understanding. I got you. You can go. Look, oh, these reports, Todd will show up in the last five minutes. I'll be like, oh, you just missed him. He uh, had to take care of a thing. Uh, and you'll get me back one of these days. It's fine. 
Look, you mean that or are you just saying that? I, I mean that. Look, we've both been doing this for 15 years. And in the last 15 years, the amount of times I've gotten in the water and surfing has been abysmally low. Like, it, yeah. pressingly, oh my gosh, I'm the old guy I used to make fun of, of being yeah. the old guy in the office who never actually did the thing that he did the work to do. I'm that guy now. We're that guy now. Yeah. And so if you can have one an afternoon to not be that guy, that's cool. And then uh, I'll call on the favor. Sometime down the road. Deal. <laughs> but you got to promise me something. What's up? You got to take me up on this. You got to do something like this. Whatever it is, I don't, and, and you might not even have a plan of what that thing is, but you got to, at some point, let me return this favor to you. That's the only way I'm going to go. Yeah. I will. Have a good time out there, man. Hey, have a, have a short time in here. If he doesn't come <laughs> in the next three minutes, you leave. You yeah. make me that deal, all right? I'll, I'll send him a message, and I'll let him know, hey, <laughs> We, you know, we got, we just went back to doing the work, so. All right, man. Good time out there. Hey, Tom, uh, so glad you, uh, you, I know you missed the meeting, but I'm really glad you called me here. Uh, it's, uh, I'm really glad to be able to catch up and give you this report. Um, yeah, I just want to let you know, uh, yeah, Joey totally bailed. He was complete, he did, he contributed nothing to the sales this month. Uh, and I did it all, uh, as I usually do. I stepped up, sir. So uh, as you're considering that promotion, I want you to think about, uh, you know, who's got your back and who uh, doesn't show up some Fridays because the weather's nice, right? Like, I, I know we are here to serve, serve, for sir. So, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, yeah, man, totally, totally. Hang down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap things up here and uh, I'll be sure to let him know the news too. Bye. Scene! <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, thank you, that was so fun. Yeah, thanks for playing. Oh man, uh, have you surfed before? Are you a surfer? <laughs> I have not. Uh, I've always wanted to take a class. And now, you know, I live like 20 minutes from the beach and I'm just embarrassed that I have it. <laughs> well, I'm at the point now where I'm like, uh, there's a serious possibility of injury. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, like I got two kids, they're younger, they're seven and five. And I'm sure at some point they'll, they'll probably take it up. But for me, I'm like, eh, it probably is past for me. I don't know if I could do it now. I feel like if you do the kid class with your kids. That's the perfect excuse, right? Like that's how you do it, right? You get in there, you're having fun too. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> I, I, I talk to surfers uh, whenever going to the beach about why they like why they still do it or what's the reason and they'd say it's in one sense it's calming it's like meditative but in another sense they say they spent so much time learning to do it that they don't want to <laughs> not do it anymore <laughs> i hear that that's cool i know my my uh, my mom you use that line of guilt to get me to keep playing piano like every kid who takes piano lessons when they're young hits an age around like 10 or 12 where the last thing you want to do is sit in an instrument for like an yes hour. And my mom's like, well, you could quit any time. I would never force you to keep playing, but it's just such a shame because you've put so much time into it and you've got to be good and, you know, but you do you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't ever quit this. Ah, okay. <laughs> expert, expert parenting. Oh, <laughs> best. It's like, if you want to, but it's okay. Yeah, like yep. my heart will come back. It just, it plays <laughs> all the time. Uh, that you make the choice, parent. You it's make the choice, but but make me proud. Oh. <laughs> how how did you get into improv? What brought you in? Uh, it's funny. So uh, when I was a senior in high school, I had done theater super sporadically, but I had started. I, I took a I, I like took a class and then like just kind of really fell more in love with it and got more involved with it. And I was like, give me everything theater, anything like 
related to performance. And I saw a teen troupe perform and I was like, I'm 18, this is my last year I could do this. So I auditioned for the troupe, I got in, had a lot of fun. And the next year, uh, the uh, coach invited me to stick around and be like an assistant teacher person. And so like from there, I continued to perform and I sought out more classes and like, uh, you know, performed with a variety of different theaters, took some classes at Second City here in LA when I moved out to LA and just kind of got more and more involved and uh, kind of, uh, you know, got super, super into it. So, yeah. <laughs> are you going to be, are you looking into teaching virtually? Uh, how do you feel about the online thing? Is that something that, that you think you might do or, or are you at a point where you're like, ah, I want to, I want to do classroom stuff. I think like if there was uh, an, a cool opportunity or if someone was like, hey, we could really use a teacher to help out with a thing, I'd be super jazzed to help out. Um, you know, it's funny because like hilariously, um, you know, drawing from real life, the day job for me has taken up a lot of my time and my uh, kind of focus and energy. Um, so like these days I have less time to, to like do the online teaching thing. But even before like, uh, you know, COVID was really kind of the, the things were the way they are now, like, I, you know, I definitely do miss teaching and I miss performing uh, kind of more regularly. Um, since moving back to LA, I actually haven't done that. Uh, I've performed more in other cities since moving to LA than I have in LA. So, wow, really? Yeah, in the last two and a half years. Just because when I first moved, I was taking a little break because I was like, I just want to get things calibrated. Uh, and then, you know, I, I'm really lucky to have awesome relationships with, uh, you know, Curious Comedy in Portland and then also Hideout in Austin. And uh, they've been super kind and generous and invited me out to play a couple of times. So, you know, it's when it's a whole trip, then you're like, oh, yeah, of course, I'll be there and I can make the time for it. When it's like, oh, I should, you know, make an effort and reach out to theaters here locally. I'm like, I'll do that next week. <laughs> yes, yes. Two years later, you're like, oh, no, I haven't done that. Yet. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, that's on my to do list. Oh, yeah. I've got this job and this thing and this thing and this. And thing. then this project that's kind of taken on my attention. And I, I did a little improv last weekend over there. So I'll come back to it later. And, yeah. But you're, you're going to be doing a show tonight, actually. I am, yeah. Uh, I'm really excited. Sean Landry invited me to play with uh, the Nationals. Uh, it, they're playing out of the Pack Theater. Mm -hmm. so it's really cool to see all the improv that's kind of experimenting with this yeah. format, right? Because, like, uh, to me, I think it's a really fun crossover of, like, my improv background and then, like, the bit of, like, film and on-camera work stuff because it's, like, as an improviser, if you don't have that experience, like how much do you lean into or like acknowledge the fact that you're, you know, I'm like seated here and we're doing a scene to a camera rather than yeah, like, yeah. Like, right? like even little things like, do I look at you on video to try to have that connection or do I look at my camera to give the illusion of eye lines and like connection, like what do we prioritize? What is the style? Like, so there's so many fun things that it's really neat to see troops kind of experimenting with, trying to solve and find answers to. Uh, and then all the technical backend stuff of like, you know, do we have someone editing and switching things or like how to have, how to improvise, imp uh, how to improv theaters approach that and how do you create an audience, uh, you know, like, do you have someone engaging with Twitch chat or, you know, whatever the whole time, like, there's so many options and possibilities. Uh, it's cool to see people experimenting. And you're right on where it's like, Ooh, nobody, no improv theater has prepared for this. So everyone's <laughs> like equal. Everyone's trying to figure it out. And I think yeah. there are a lot more people who aren't like the gatekeepers who are making more advances <laughs> because they don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And they're just like, I don't know, let's, let's try this. Let's, what is Twitch? Let's find out what the hell that works. Let's utilize the technology. Uh, and that I think there are advances being made. And now people are starting to lean into the technology to be like, okay, cool. What? what can we do now with this? Not what, what are we missing, but what, what are the things we can do moving forward? Right. I think it is a very different thing than improv live, right? Because what makes improv so special and, and such a, a joy that I fell in love with is being live on a stage uh, or even in an audience with a performance of improv is this electric, personal, like yeah. deeply connected experience. That's like the comedy comes from being in the moment uh, and it's really hard with a stationary camera to capture like us as humans with eyeballs where we're focusing and why, yeah. and, like our experience of improv on a stage, right? So like uh, it's a completely different form. And so it's fun to watch improvisers tackle this form and like, uh, you know, learning the skills of streamers, which I deal with more in my day job and like watching that, those kind of skills cross over into improv and live theatrical performance. Uh, it's, it's been really fun to kind of see some friends do some really cool stuff and play a little bit here and there too. So. 
Yeah, because you're you're in the daytime job. You're submerged in the world of like video games, right? So that's your that's what you do during the day, and then yeah. you're trying to find time to do improv as well. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. So, but fun. what I love is that this now gives me a chance to reach out to you and go like, hey, do you want to do ten minutes, and we can do it from wherever we are as long as our schedule yeah. is fine. It's it's really fun. It is a thing where I'm like, well, now I play with the theater in Austin, but I'm doing it from my living room, so I can do it any night of the week they want. Or you know, like Sean Landry can hit me up randomly, like, and I'll be like, let me check my work schedule, and make sure I can, but I'll, I'll be there, right? So like, it is really nice to be flexible in that way. So, and, and it's great to be like, oh, cool, great scene. I'm gonna go have dinner now. Have a good <laughs> day. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, it's funny because it's definitely a double-edged thing of like, it's super good. And the hard part is kind of still creating those boundaries for yourself, right? Like yeah. I remember one day, like I, I, had, I, was, I had the day off from work and I got up and I got to my computer because I was like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, like check my email and then like play some games and do some relaxation stuff. And it was 3 p.m. and I realized I've been like working on work stuff the whole time just because I was like, oh, just 10 more minutes of this or that. <laughs> yes. So you just, those like those barriers between I'm at work, I'm at home, I'm doing my own thing. Yeah. You evaporate and it's really easy to just like, plow on and not even realize you're running on empty. And so it's just like re figuring out how to find that balance is also part of it too. And I mean, you're right on. It's like finding that, that healthy boundaries, the balance to be like, it's so easy. Like you said, you look up, it's three o'clock and you're like, I was just going to do this one thing. Now the day's <laughs> half done. Exactly. Yeah. Um, how can people, if they want to get a hold of you, if they want to follow you, like with, with shows you're doing or across social media, like what's the best way people can do that? Yeah, uh, I'm mostly on Twitter these days. So at Michael Yi Chao, Y-I-C-H-A-O. Uh, I'm trying to check Facebook less because usually it just makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I love seeing and talking to friends there, but I think like, uh, you know, the kind of ad algorithms and everything else and kind of you know it's just a it's a constant barrage like there's a phrase of doom scrolling and it happens with tw any social media mm -hmm. scrolling and being sad about the things you're reading yes yeah. i'm like man i have a really bad habit of doing so much of that i'm just trying to like i'm gonna try to just be on one platform and one that like is uh, i use twitter a lot for work and talking with players so i just was like oh i'll, I'll stick to this mainly uh, if you like dog pictures uh, i post pictures of nicks on my instagram now and then too so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there you can. Same thing, Michael Beach out. But yeah, just trying to keep it, trying to reduce the amount of social consumption that I'm doing. And it's so important now, too, to be like, what are the things that trigger me? What are those moments that I can get away from so I don't find myself going down that rabbit hole and getting upset? And what, how can I utilize this to keep my mental health up as well? Yeah, I think it's, you know, social media is by nature a little performative, whether we intend it to be or not. And it's just amplified when we're all so stuck on it and focused on it. So yeah, definitely trying to be more self-conscious about that. Cause I think usually, you know, I tend to be pretty happy-go-lucky and pretty cheerful, but I think I even catch myself in a patterns where I'm like, I'm really overly ignoring things that upset me to try to be happy all the time. And mm. Counter to the intention that I want, I gotta allow myself to be like I'm kind of you know grumpy spot and yeah. uh, just go go for a walk. Which having a pet's great for that. They force you to go outside and remind, remember the outdoors. So it's the, I I dude I had to start putting alarms on my phone to be like get up, <laughs> stand up, walk around. Like this yeah. is your, this is your 45 minute alarm. Get up, walk around, then sit back down because yeah, it's so you get in that position of being seated and then you, you yeah. all time it's like being in a casino there's like the windows are gone <laughs> there's no clocks and then you're like right, oh, right. It's midnight doing what happened the here? thing you're doing yeah yeah, yeah. I, I always joke that my dog must think i've gone insane i just sit in the corner of my room and talk to no one all day now so. <laughs> your dog's just like are you okay michael are you okay okay buddy you're right <laughs> and you're like yeah i'm okay and the dog's like awesome dogs are the best they're all just positive <laughs> I love it. Yeah, such energy. Um, well, have a great show tonight. Thank you so much. I can't wait to play with you again, man. That was super fun. Thanks so much for the invitation. This is great. I'll All right. See you, buddy. Bye.